uh, good evening to all the participants and uh, the delegates. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me thank uh, the program director, Dr. M. G. Srikumar, the session chair, Dr. Rama Patnai. Of course, uh, I'm grateful to Professor P. V. Kanur, the president, LIS Academy, and uh, the organizing chair for inviting me and giving me this opportunity today to interact with you all, sharing my views among everybody. Uh, just sometimes back, one of my fellow panelists, Dr. G. Mahesh, he talked about uh, the library diplomacy, how the library is playing any important role in uh, diplomatic activity or not. And he mentioned in three dimensions how library could be involved in diplomatic activity, like uh, library in diplomacy, diplomacy for library, or library for diplomacy. Well, uh, if you think in all the directions, then of course, we'll come to a conclusion that what is the important activity or the role played by the library in diplomatic activity? So my today's discussion is the collaboration, networking, outreach, and diplomacy. Libraries in the digital world. So friends, uh, as we have been discussing uh, the library diplomacy, and if you go in detail, then of course, all these issues are coming up in diplomatic activity for library, like collaboration, networking, outreach. And if we clap together, if, to, uh, if we sum up, then of course we'll get some conclusion, some findings where the libraries are playing a role in diplomatic activity. That's not very new. This is age old practices, the libraries play the role in this activity. So as I mentioned that in collaboration, uh, in, 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 if we talk about today's uh, time, that is the digital era where we are being, then why we need collaboration? So let us understand. The collaboration among uh, the libraries, especially the academic libraries where I feel this is a necessity in this digital era, where libraries are rapidly getting changed, the technological changes are coming up, the attitude of the competent authority towards the library is changing very rapidly. The users' information seeking behaviors are changing. Apart from that, we are getting a lot of threats like financial cutbacks, pressure for accountability, changes in pedagogy, virtual learning environment, because you know they're due to the lockdown uh, in our country, even in uh, uh, other countries also. Globally, we are facing the COVID 19 pandemic situation, and almost PG to KG, all the academic institutions are closed. So the uh, libraries also no exception to that. So they all are trying to reach to the students to their respective places through virtual learning environment, through virtual learning environment to the libraries too. They are uh, trying to reach out and getting their resources of their need for their uh, study. So we, the librarians or the libraries, need to change ourselves. And in this situation, the collaboration is of course a necessity which will help us to provide uh, better means of services. The resources and support provided by the libraries are nowadays invisible because we are virtually providing the services. Now the physical existence of the libraries are no existence rather sometimes or very less importance are given. Because now if you if you if you think the situation, if the students can get the, all the literatures for their teaching, for their research, for their learning from their home only, then what's the need of physical existence of the library? And apart from that, so library is handling Library basically the, providing the facilities of subscribing the resources, putting those resources in uh, in a, a searchable format or a singular search solutions. They are providing the through discovery services and providing the better access facilities, retrieval facilities to the users. So apart from this subscribe content, there is another threat. I should not say threat, but it's a challenge. You know when. There are a number of avenues available to the users for getting those resources from different other sources like uh, open access platforms. So how it helps? Why we are talking about the collaboration among the libraries? Though it's age-old practices, we have been practicing. It's not the concept of today. If you go back to our library history, then you will find that we had uh, those sort of practices among uh, the libraries in regional uh, ways, I mean, regionally, nationally, Sometimes in international collaboration, also we had also having that. So what can we do? Even in uh, to, as I mentioned that uh, today's uh, you know uh, rapid changes, uh, technology, and all those things are forcing, are compelling us to change ourselves, you know, according to uh, the pace of time. So we can avoid the uh, duplication of efforts. Of course, we can uh, you know enhance our efficiency, streamline uh, the work process, which is globally accepted. 
or maybe nationally accepted more innovative services sometimes we are in question you know just we are the facilitator we are not the content creator we are not the innovative service provider we are not giving any value added services most of the times so this is the time where we need to justify we need to prove ourselves and we have to have those innovative ideas to implement and uh, provide services to our users the professional skill development among the staff members of different libraries maybe nationally maybe internationally and this collaborative effort you know which ultimately insist wider range of uh, services to the users which is our ultimate goal now as i mentioned that uh, uh, the another approach is the networking why what is the need of uh, i mean need of networking the need just to mention here what is networking and all about because uh, you know you are aware but why we are discussing today was the need of network so as you know that uh, exponential growth of information lack of sufficient funds and control both in demand because users you know when they are in need they are always in search of all the relevant information of their uh, field or area of interest to get from the like we already from one place to another and finally in our uh, older days we had only option to go through the indian catalogs and to find out you know the relevant uh, resources which is not available in our library or the relevant library and they demand it through interlibrary loan but unfortunately the delivery mode was not that efficient on those days and most of the occasions it takes long time you know to reach to the user so now the revolution came up due to the telecommunication technology opened up a new avenue the library cooperation library networking again boosted like anything many more new initiatives were taken to bring the libraries together at regional level national level sometimes uh, as i mentioned international level too sharing their collections and the variety of new services was uh, introduced email services central repository of data storage opac services and so on so the library networks in international level also you know existed and maybe the pioneer to force us to force the libraries to build up those networking regionally national level or sometimes in international level in india also uh, let it is we started of developing those library networks only goal to provide better services to users always as we had and we are having right now too so these are the different library networks some of them are very active providing lot of value added services to the countrymen sometimes to the uh, you know flow uh, because there is no restrictions such as some of the services of internet and some cases some of the library networks are not that active not uh, not you know uh, performing up to that level but still those ideas were implemented much before so only intention only goal was to you know nurture was to develop an international collaboration will which ultimately moves towards the diplomacy building the relationship achieving the diplomatic goal of a country only then gradually move to uh, library consortium so if you if you think about india then of course the need only you know forced us to build up those consortium to establish those consortium that the like minded uh, institutes the libraries they came closer and build up those uh, consortium uh, since 1980s even today we are having a lot of uh, consortium they are uh, performing very efficiently very actively and uh, their their collaboration their networking efforts you know bringing together all the libraries only with one goal that is uh, sharing the information resources among themselves so some of the library consortium in india uh, you may cite examples like sindes coursa uc infonet csr regional consortium presently uh, national knowledge research consortium alinet and consortium delcon sera and many more and uh, international uh, uh, consortium also Uh, we know uh, nothing uh, much to discuss about it now the outreach program as i mentioned that this is a part of uh, diplomatic activity or uh, this uh, you know the 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 activity like the collaboration the networking the outreach program uh, which ultimately moves towards the diplomacy and the outreach program if you uh, have a, have a, have a look the outreach program not necessarily in, in you know specified to a larger group of people sometimes the outreach program may start with a need from a single user 
which sometimes you know proved that it's uh, successful and that may then try to you know serve to the a larger group of people and become a regular practice regular service so outreach as a whole what you believe that or what you know is basically reaching out to others learning from others sharing information from others and to enrich ourselves and develop ourselves and library is the best place for doing that that may be at regional level national level or international level so then uh, as a outreach program you can have uh, you know number of activities we already practiced we have been practicing so what i believe that as a collection development policy as we are having in our libraries we should have the outreach activity policy too so that we can uh, promote ourselves effectively, effectively deliver uh, better services to the user communities at large so like the outreach program uh, let me give uh, some of the examples say for example since the beginning or since the uh, beginning of the society when the library uh, came up library was changed the documents were changed that was used by the royal families uh, the people from uh, elite class or the monks they were the person who were authorized to use the, uh, use the libraries but gradually the library reached to the common people and even there were deprived deprived uh, people you know who had never got that opportunity to make use of good libraries or uh, good documents for their for their education for their study so the mobile library is concept today we are thinking of mobile i mean libraries in mobile device but those days technology were not available and but we never stopped ourselves giving services to the unprivileged classes and we tried to reach out to the larger community through mobile library services even in india throughout the world there are number of uh, examples number of active uh, participations of libraries to reach out to the common people happened but in our country also probably this was the first <clears throat> mobile library in india was inaugurated by dr s r ranganath the father of library science on 21st october 1931 <coughs> at uh, thiruvaru district in tamil nadu even the recent times also in just uh, you know few years back if you can remember then uh, the delhi public library with the slogan they started one uh, mobile library service that is ghar ghar dastak ghar ghar pustak the ultimate goal was to reach out to the greater masses to the larger community of the society for uh, their development now let me talk about uh, the diplomacy what is all about so i'm not the person you know to talk about to uh, uh, the diplomacy uh, in detail but what i understand that that the, the activity or the skill of managing international relation typically by a uh, uh, country's representatives abroad this is basically diplomatic activity even now uh, let us see how uh, the library or the uh, books or the magazines or the publications they took that active part you know to uh, achieve the foreign policy goals of various uh, countries like if i if i give some examples of uh, diplomacy uh, then uh, there may be uh, gunboat diplomacy dollar diplomacy public diplomacy people's diplomacy intermediary diplomacy digital diplomacy and sometimes back dr g mohan simons mentioned that uh, the science diplomacy but we should also remember that library had played a tremendous role library had played as an instrument you know in diplomacy in the diplomatic activity so give me uh, let me give uh, some example you know uh, you can remember uh, the soviet union and uh, the soviet union official literature from the soviet union including propaganda writing had begun to travel to this india since 1930s and moscow set up the agency for publication in foreign languages in 1931 in india it's really surprising and very interesting that russian literature began to uh, be translated into bengal uh, especially in kolkata in 1950s and Uh, more than more than uh, you know 56 languages they started uh, publishing the russian interest and that played a, a a very important role in uh, diplomacy as a whole another example we can cite the american libraries and information centers uh, even in uh, our country there were a number of uh, american um, libraries existed and they are providing the services to the country people and uh, as you say Uh, of course uh, we can claim that the library or the uh, books or the publications played a very 
uh, important role in this uh, diplomatic activity. US-China ties, you know, uh, uh, there was a very interesting uh, story behind it. There was a, a librarian, uh, you know, in US-China, uh, I mean, uh, the US Library of Congress, uh, the Chinese uh, Collection Division, Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Chi Wang, he was the librarian and academician. He played an important role, a crucial role for uh, developing this uh, US-China ties. In 1971, uh, 79, it's uh, really very interesting, the American librarians visited Beijing for the first time. And this was the event uh, that Chi Wang uh, helped to organize, which ultimately happened months after two countries established diplomatic relations. So it's uh, noteworthy to mention here how uh, a, a, a librarian, how uh, a, library, a library, you know, played active role in this diplomatic relation. And uh, uh, this is uh, to intimate you that uh, uh, Chi Wang uh, is now uh, the president of US China Policy Foundation, is still alive in uh, public uh, diplomacy. So apart from that, there are number of examples of uh, the role of library in uh, diplomacy, like uh, British Council Library, uh, all over uh, uh, the country, our country, all over uh, the world, you will find number of British Council libraries, and uh, which uh, ultimately played uh, you know, an uh, important role in uh, diplomatic activity. Uh, even the National Library of India, you know, they have uh, the uh, book exchange program, the exchange program of, uh, you know, uh, the training program of man for manpower development of libraries. Uh, almost 19 countries, you know, they signed MOUs and uh, they have uh, this sort of uh, exchange program very much actively they are performing. Uh, in July uh, 2018, very recently, this is a, a international collaboration you know, example of uh, two libraries. One is Colorado uh, School of Mines and uh, another is the Chinese University of Mining and Technology. And, and they have, you know, uh, a very good uh, understanding among themselves. They have the collaboration in a, a project. They are developing each other. They are giving the training, uh, their staff, and they are organizing these sort of uh, programs uh, very frequently. And uh, in 2020, uh, what uh, I got from the literature, they that they are sending uh, the uh, librarian back to Chinese University of Mining and Technology uh, for instruction and research related uh, information literacy program. So we can we can claim that uh, the library you know, are playing very important role in diplomatic activity uh, through collaboration, through networking, through outreach activity, and uh, you know the sum of those activities are only you know, affecting only uh, enhancing the diplomatic activities as a whole. So uh, in uh, conclusion, uh, I just want to highlight some of the points, but I thought that uh, I should share with you, we should explore, you know, uh, more potential research collaboration among uh, the libraries of uh, different countries, and not only internationally, uh, some places maybe regionally or national uh, at national level, and technical know-how exchange that uh, in today's scenario, we all are not expert in all the areas. Uh, so we can uh, exchange our technical know-how and develop ourselves and uh, through uh, exchanging our uh, library people. And we should develop the relationship you know, with the users. They, we, 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 we are not only the service provider, we are uh, the partner of, uh, so the users, uh, and the library should not be monologic, it should be uh, dialogic in approach uh, towards the user so that library and the library people could develop themselves, you know, just by sharing the uh, knowledge, sharing the information with the users too. And uh, we have the age old practices of uh, you know, global outlook in all the libraries, like uh, even if we think of our library schools, we are using or even in our uh, practice, in our profession, when we are working, we are using the global tools for information processing and uh, organization, for classification, for cataloging, uh, for uh, many other activities, the globally accepted tools are being used. And the other approach may be inside out to outside in model. We can uh, 
thing that is the development of idea now we are sharing our locally you know developed locally developed uh, content to the world rather than only accepting you know uh, the commercially developed uh, content and sharing it and uh, the way also is another way the green path which uh, the local content is being shared by the libraries to the outside world and if you think about the global pathfinder services like base core semantic scholar wisdom ai and one more approach where we are already collaborated and uh, ultimately that gives us the diplomatic direction that is the uh, oss uh, development and applications uh, if you talk about the uh, kuha dspace greenstone you know and uh, many more uh, oss software we have been using so there is a community support system where uh, globally uh, the scientists globally the librarians you know uh, are developing the systems uh, they are having the discussing forum and uh, so ultimately uh, if you just think and have a look then we were uh, globally global approach we had earlier and even in today's world we need much more you know towards the collaborative approach among all the libraries and i believe that that should be uh, the role of our uh, libraries to build up the relationship among countries in a different way sometimes may not be uh, very directly but in an indirect way uh, the library is are playing very important role so if you just try to think of the philosophy of ubuntu uh, it means we cannot live in isolation